So chapter five, the birth of Dhritarashtra, Dhrit, Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidura. After the last funeral rites were performed for Vichyuraria, Satyavati wept and lamented for her deceased son. Ambika and Ambalika were also greatly overwhelmed at the untimely death of their husband. Upon realizing the possible extinction of the dynasty, Satyavati approached Bhishma requesting him, the perpetuation of the Kuru dynasty now depends on you, the wives of your brother, Ambalika and Ambika, desire prodigy, progeny, and under my order, you should procreate children by them to continue this dynasty. You should duly marry a wife of good character and enthrone yourself as king. Do not plunge our ancestors into hell. Upon hearing Satyavati's request, the relatives and friends of the Kuru family agreed. However, Bhishma replied to his stepmother, Oh mother, what, have you, what you have said is certainly sanctioned according to the code of virtue, but you forget my vow regarding marriage and children. I have taken a vow of lifelong celibacy. I may have to renounce kingship of three of the three worlds, the kingdom of heaven and anything greater that exists. But this vow I will never renounce. The earth may lose its scent, water may lose its moisture, the sun may lose its glory and fire its heat. The moon may lose its cooling rays or injure his prowess, but I will not renounce this vow. Hearing Bhishma's determination, Satyavati replied, I know the vow that you have taken is on my account, but considering the present emergency, you should accept this order as duty to the ancestors. Bhishma again emphasized his duty to truth. O oh queen, do not sway from the path of virtue. Renunciation of a vow is never claimed in the sashras, holy scriptures. Listen to this narration and then decide the right course of action. In a former millennium, Parasharama killed Karta Burya, Arjuna in battle for the sin of slaying his father. Not only did he kill the followers of Kartra Burya, Arjuna, but he destroyed the entire Kshatriya race 21 times. When the earth was devoid of great warriors, the queens approached the great rishis and procreated children by them, and thus the Kshatriya race was, was revived. Therefore, a purified Brahmana should be invited with an offer of wealth and let him raise children by the wives of Vikravarya. Smiling brightly, Satyavati agreed with Bhishma and informed him, O descendant of the Bharata, I agree with this proposal. I now understand what is to be done to this con in this connection. My father was an honest man. I now understand. My father was an honest man, and, and to maintain pious activities, he kept the boat for rowing passengers across the river Yamuna. One day, the great sage Parasharara came and requested me to take him across the river. While I was rowing the boat, the sage became attracted to my beauty and requested fulfillment of his passionate desire. However, I was afraid of my father's wrath, and I was also, but I was also afraid that the rishi might curse me. The sage brought me under his control and in the middle of the river Yamuna, he created a dense fog. He, sat, he satisfied his sensual desires and was very pleased with my submissiveness. Before that time, Satyavati continued, a fishy odor emanated from my body, but after the Rishi's touch, a, a celestial aroma radiates from my person. The sage assured me that by bringing forth a child in the middle of the river, I would still remain a virgin. The child born of our union was the eminent erudite, erudite sage, Vasudeva. He had compiled the Vedic knowledge and expounded the science of devotion to God. He was born in the middle of a river. He became known as Dwipayana, the island born. Because he is compiled because he compiled the Vedas, he is known as Vasudeva. And because of his back blackest complexion, he is known as Krishna. He is truthful in speech, sense controlled, and freed from all sins. 
If I ask him, then certainly he will generate good children by the wives of your brother. Previously, Vyasa had promised me, mother, when you are in a difficult, when you are in difficult, when, when you are in difficulty, simply remember me and I will come to you by the speed of the mind. If you are willing, Bhishma, I will call him this very moment. Upon hearing the name of Vyasa, Bhishma joined his palms in reverence saying, the sage has true wisdom and sense control and would be a fit person to continue the Kuru dynasty. Therefore, you have my full approval. When Bhishma had given his consent, Satyavati immediately thought of her son, Vyasa, and within moments, the great sage appeared before her. Satyavati duty, duly welcomed her son and taking him in her, her arms, bathed him with affectionate tears. Vyasa offered abiances to his mother saying, oh mother, I have come to fulfill your desire. Commands me at once and I shall carry out your order. Oh my son, Satyavati replied, recently Vitravarya, the king of this world expired leaving no descendant and thus the Kuru dynasty is in danger of extinction. Here in Bhishma, Santanu's son, here is Bhishma, Santana's son, but he has taken a vow of celibacy and will not beget children. The two wives of Vitravarya, Ambika and Ambalika, are still living, and I request you to conceive children by them to continue the Kuru dynasty. Vasudeva, hearing the appeals of his mother, replied, Since Vitravarya is my brother, born of your womb, I shall give birth to the children who will equal the heavenly gods. Let the queens observe the vows I indicate for one full year. Satyavati expressed her urgency. There is very little time for vows. The earth is without a king and the citizens being without a protector will certainly perish. If conception must take place this month, Vasudeva replied, then the kings of Kashi must be willing to bear my ugliness, strong odor and matted looks. If they can perform these austerities, then they will give birth to noble children. Let one of the queens, dressed in clean clothes and bedecked with ornaments, wait for me in her bedchamber. Satyavati then approached Ambika, explaining to her the situation. With great effort, Ambika was convinced that it was for the good of the world. When the right time came for conceiving a child, Satyavati took Ambika to the bedchamber and told her, Vic Shavaria had an older brother who has been, until this time, unknown to you. He will soon come here to conceive a child by you that will perpetuate our dynasty. Wait for him here without dropping to sleep. Ambika then waited in her room, contemplating the person to be Bhishma or one of the other Kuru elders. Suddenly, Vasudeva entered the room, and Ambika seeing his matted locks, ugly features, and grim visage, closed her eyes in fear and did not open them once during the time of conception. When Vasya came out of the chamber, he met his brother who inquired, will this princess have a worthy son? Hearing her, he replied, the child, the child born shall have the power of 10,000 elephants. He will be equal to a royal sage and will possess learning, intelligence, and prowess. However, because the princess has closed her eyes during conception, the child shall be born blind. Upon hearing this prediction from her son, Satyavati wondered, how can a blind king rule this earth? How will he protect his family and the people of this world? You must again conceive another child that can act as king. Vasudeva agreed and went away. In due course of time, Ambika gave birth to a male child who was blind. After ch the child's birth, he was given the name Dhritarashtra. Satyavati was anxious to beget another male child who could rule the world, and after receiving Ambalika's consent, she called for Vasudeva. Vasudeva came as promised and approached the chambers of Ambalika. Ambalika, seeing the repulsive features of Vasudeva, turned pale with fear. After conception, the sage left the chambers and told his mother. Because the queen has paled upon seeing my austere features, child will be born white in color. His name, therefore, will be Pandu, 
or one with white complexion. In due course of time, Ambalika gave birth to a child endowed with auspicious marks. He was pale in complexion, but was handsome in all respects. Indeed, it was the child who would become the future father of the Pandavas. Sometime after this child was born, Satyavati approached the beautiful Ambalika, again asking her to conceive a child by Vasudeva. The princess felt she could not bear again to see the ugly features of the sage, and thus she sent to her chambers one of her maid servants who had heavenly beauty. When Vasya entered the chambers, the maid servant offered respects to the sage, treating him kindly. She took her seat near him when asked. Vasya Deva was well pleased with her, and upon leaving her, and upon leaving, told her, You shall be a slave no longer. Your child will be just as personified and esteemed among intelligent men on earth. After leaving the cha queen's chambers, Vasya met his mother and informed her of Ambalika's deception and how he had begotten a son by a Shuddha woman. After speaking with his mother, Vasya disappeared. The child born of the maid servant was named Vidura. He was an incarnation of Yamaraja, the great Vashanava Mahajana and Lord of the Earth, um, and Lord of Death. Due to the curse of Mandavya Muni, Yamaraja had to be born on this earth as a Shudra. Thus, the wives of Vitraraya Vasudeva begot two sons, Drit Ashtra and Pandu, who would save the Kuru race from extinction. Thus ends the Mahabharata summation of the fifth chapter of the Adi Parva, Adi Parva entitled The Birth of Drit Ashtra, Pandu, and Vidura. Chapter Commentary. After Vitraraya's death, the mother and wives lamented greatly. Attached is found even the members of great dynasties. Maya is so strong that one thinks that his family members will live eternally and that he or she will never die. Queen Kunti was born in a royal dynasty descending from the moon god. Her sons were all born of great demigods and were highly qualified. She understood her attachment was not proper and therefore she prayed in the presence of Lord Krishna. O Lord of the universe, soul of the universe, O personality of the form of the universe, please sever my tie of affection for my kinsmen the Pandavas and the Rishnis. There is nothing wrong with the affection and attachment, but we owe our greatest affection to God first. Queen Kunzi concluded her prayers to Lord Krishna. O Lord of Madhu, of the Ganges forever flows to the sea without hindrance. Let my attraction to be constantly drawn unto you without being diverted to anyone else. Or as Lord Jesus Christ put it, I have not come to this earth to bring peace, but a sword. I will turn the father against the son and the mother against the daughter. Those of his own household will be his enemy. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. It is not that emotional feelings can be suddenly cut off. Feelings of affection have to be transferred to Lord Krishna. And then not only has affection and then one not only has affection for his family members, but for all living entities. Because one comes to the realization that everyone is part of the family of the Supreme Father, Lord Krishna. The process of being attached to Krishna has been given to us by Lord Sri Krishna Ch 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 Chatana Mahaprabhu, the Yuga Avatara for the Kali age. He has requested us to chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. This will cleanse the heart of all material desires and attachments and fix the mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Queen Satyavati was very anxious to beget a qualified king to give protection to the citizens. In the age of Kali, powerful warrior kings no longer existed, nor do qualified Brahmanas. Previously, the kings were her heroic men who would face each other on battle of on the field of battle and fight till death. They knew that if they died on the field of battle facing the enemy, they would attain a higher destination after this life. Therefore, they feared they were fearless in battle. As the Iron Age of Kali progressed, the warrior kings lost their strength and heroism. 
Today, armies no longer face each other in battle, but hide in trenches and behind trees, fearful of death. They are not convinced that there is another life after this one. Gone are the days of these chivalrous warriors because everyone in this Kali age is fastly becoming a Shudra. The modern leaders of the world do not have a heroic fighting spirit and thus do not come out on the field of battle to lead their forces. They sit in their opposites thousands of miles away from the battlefield. Even the modern day generals do not lead their forces into battle, but direct them miles away from the front line. Great generals such as Bhishma and Arjuna commanded the respect of all citizens by being fearless in battle. In the Kali Yuga, the act of begetting a child in a brother's wife is forbidden. In the Brahma by Varta Puruna, there is the following verse. Uh, I'm not even going to butcher that. In the age of Kali, five acts are forbidden. The offer of a horse in sacrifice, the offering of a cow in sacrifice, the acceptance of the order of sannyasya, the offerings of flesh to the forefathers, and a man begetting children in his brother's wife. In the Kali Yuga, the offering of a cow or horse is sacrifice, in sacrifice is forbidden because the Brahmanas are no longer qualified. The Brahmanas would first kill a cow or horse by mantra, and then by another mantra, bring it back to life with a new body. This power of mantra has been lost in the Kali Yuga, and therefore the act is forbidden. When the Brahmanas could not bring the animal back to life, they continued with the sacrifices, considering the animal meat as the prasad or mercy of the Lord. In this way, meat eating became, began in Vedic culture. It was for this reason that the Lord incarnated as Buddha, saving the poor animals from slaughter. slaughter. He stopped all Vedic sacrifice by preaching the philosophy of ahimsa or nonviolence. The only sacrifice recommended in the age of Kali is the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. After all, sacrifices are meant to please God. And in this age, the Lord is satisfied by such a simple process. In the age of Kali, the Supreme Lord in his form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should be worshipped with his associates by performance of a Sankirtan Yajna, the congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. This process is accepted by intelligent men. The word Samuhasa refers to intelligent men who possess sufficient brain substance. Sannyasa is also forbidden in the age of Kali because it is difficult to find a person qualified for complete renunciation. In the Kali Yuga, people are very fallen. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Sanuka Rishi addressed Sutu Goswami thus, O oh, learned one, in this iron age of Kali, persons have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. In India, it has become popular to accept the renounced order of life simply to fill one's belly. This has given a very bad name to the sannyasa order, and people no longer have respect for that ashram. These so-called renunciates have sex with many women and are more like monkeys than sannyasis. Because people are generally in the mode of passion and ignorance, it is not possible for them to accept the renounced order of life and follow the strict rules and regulations of that order. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the renounced order of life at the age of 24. He did so to deliver the fallen conditioned souls. Only a person who has transcended the modes of passion and ignorance and is firmly established in goodness can become a sannyasi, strictly following the regular principle of no sex. It is forbidden to beget children in the womb of a brother's wife. In previous yugas, if a man was sterile or the husband had died, then the brother was called upon to propagate children, as in the case of Vitraria and Vasudeva. However, in the Kali Yuga, unscrumpulous people will take advantage of this Vedic principle simply to have illicit sex. This leads to further incest, which degrades the quality of the population. Thus, this act, this is a forbidden act in this age. <laughs>